Hello students today we will discuss CBSE NCERT class 9th chapter 5 the fundamental unit of life now let's see what's the fundamental unit body of every organism is made of small units that are called the cells now we can say that cell is the fundamental and structural unit of life cell was first discovered by robert hooke in 1665 he observed that just like honeycomb organisms also have small compartments and he named these compartments as cells now let's see the structure of a cell cells are highly organized and has some specialized cell organelles these organelles are as you can see ribosomes nucleus mitochondria cytoskeleton golgi apparatus rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum plasma membrane proxisome centrioles the cells are broadly classified in two types first is the prokaryotic cell and the second is eukaryotic cell pro means before and karyotic means nucleus prokaryotic cells do not have well defined nucleus and well defined cell organelles but on the other hand eukaryotic cells have well defined nucleus and well defined cell organelles now one by one we will observe the components of the cell now let's see the differences between these two cells the differences between these two are based on certain parameters the first parameter is nucleus nucleus is present inside a eukaryotic cell but it is absent inside the prokaryotic cell next parameter is number of chromosomes eukaryotic cells have more than one number of chromosomes but prokaryotic cell has only one that is not a true chromosome so we call them as plastids next parameter is the cell type eukaryotic cells are usually multicellular and the prokaryotic cells are usually unicellular but some cyanobacteria bacteria may be multicellular the next parameter is true membrane bound nucleus these are present in eukaryotic cell but absent inside the prokaryotic cell now we will see the example of both for eukaryotic cell the example is animal cell and plant cell for prokaryotic cell example is bacteria and archaea last but not the least parameter genetic recombination in eukaryotic cell it is through meiosis and fusion of gametes and in prokaryotic cell it is partial unidirectional transfers of dna now let's see the components of cell the first component is the plasma membrane or you can call it cell membrane plasma membrane is a microscopic membrane which forms the external boundary of a cell and it protects the cell from the external environment the function of plasma membrane is that it allows the flow of limited substances in and out of the cell it is very thin delicate elastic and selectively permeable which means it allows only certain substances to enter or exit the cell now we will discuss these two definitions diffusion and osmosis diffusion diffusion is basically the process of movement of substances from high concentration to the low concentration these substances can be amino acids carbohydrates or lipids on the other hand osmosis is just the movement of water from high concentration to the low concentration as you can see the diagrams of both now let's discuss the next component cell wall the cell wall is a structural layer that surrounds some types of cell plant cells have both the cell wall and the cell membrane and the animal cell has only cell wall the function of the cell wall is that it protects the plasma membrane and it determines the shape of the cell next component and the most important component of the cell is nucleus nucleus is very dense and is generally spherical in shape 
nucleus is important because it carries all the genetic material that is to be passed from a parent to future generation it is bounded by two membranes forming a nuclear envelope and in this envelope we have nuclear membrane and nuclear pores the function of the nucleus is it plays the central role in cellular reproduction which is that one cell divides into two and it is the powerhouse of genes the next component is the cytoplasm cytoplasm is basically part of a protoplasm and it surrounds the nucleus it is the fluid that is filled inside the nucleus and carries all the organelles of the cell now what are cell organelles cell organelles are specialized parts of cell which perform different function inside the cell cell organelles are specialized parts of cell which perform different functions inside the cell now let's see what are these cell organelles the first one is endoplasmic reticulum then is the golgi apparatus then lysosomes mitochondria vacuoles and plastids now further we will describe each of them in detail the first one is the endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is network of tube like structures these are very long tube like structures and in some cells they are oblong bags it is of two types rough endoplasmic reticulum in which the ribosomes are present and the second one is smooth endoplasmic reticulum in which the ribosomes are absent basically ribosomes are the builder of proteins inside the cells the function of endoplasmic reticulum is that it gives the internal support to the cell it is the skeleton system of the cell it transports the protein and it works as a cytoplasmic framework next is the golgi apparatus the golgi apparatus is named so because it was discovered by a scientist named camillo golgi in 1843 you can call is we can call it golgi body or golgi complex the basic function of these golgi bodies is to store modify dispatch substances from endoplasmic reticulum to the other parts of the cell and the last one is that they help in the formation of lysosomes now let's see what are these lysosomes lysosomes are basically formed by golgi bodies these are very small spherical sac like structure and they are mostly found in eukaryotic cells the lysosomes are the digestive system of this cell they have certain digestive enzymes which help in the digestion of foreign substances that have entered the cell now what happens if the cell is damaged or ruptured these lysosomes burst and the digestive enzymes present inside these destroy their own cell or they eat their own cell main function is digestion of foreign substances and they help to keep the cell clean and sometimes they are called the suicidal bags of the cells now next one is the mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell mitochondria is small rod shaped organelles the main function of mitochondria is to provide the energy that is required for the chemical reactions inside the cell and it provides the energy in the form of atp which is the energy currency of the cell now the function is as i have told you to provide energy and sometimes they store energy and release it during certain reaction now vacuoles vacuoles are storage sacs for solid and liquid contents in animal cells vacuoles are small but in plant cells they are very large they are so large that they occupy 50 to 90% of the cell volume the function of vacuoles is they store important substances like amino acid sugar now lastly we will see plastids plastids are only present inside the plant cell they are broadly of two types chromoplasts which are the colored plastids and leucoplasts which are white and colorless plastids basically their function is to provide the color to the cell the plants have pigment called chlorophyll which is a chloroplast 
that's all in this chapter if you like this video do not forget to hit the like button and for more such videos do subscribe to our channel success series education